So this is a bit different from my usual content, but I've had a fair few requests throughout the years to talk about my desk setup as someone who used to edit for a living. And it's something that I've spent an unhealthy amount of money on over the years. Some of which has been quite helpful, most of which has been absolutely useless. So I thought it might be helpful to take this time to talk you through what I've got, do I recommend it, is it worth buying or is it complete crap? So in the spirit of every single tech YouTube video ever, cue the lo-fi music. And that's enough of that. So over COVID, I moved back home and actually ended up cultivating myself a pretty nice desk setup, which you can see in the background of a bunch of my videos. Back when I had two monitors, <laughs> which included the staple of the exercise bike that hasn't been used in roughly the last 25 years, which was eventually just used as a coat hanger. <laughs> but since moving to London, I've had to make do with a much smaller desk setup, which looks like this aka kind of like shit. The desk itself is just a random desk that I got off Gumtree, which is like the UK equivalent of Craigslist. Um, it's not exactly the highest quality stuff. So yeah, it's nothing special and I am very much in the market for a standing desk, but one, they're expensive and two, when you're my height, the difference between a standing desk and a sitting desk isn't really that much. It's also quite a hard desk to film because just to my left is the, my wardrobe, which has a big old mirror on it. And to my right is my bed, which is exclusive for my OnlyFans subscribers, so keep your eyes off it. But on screen now, you should be able to see all of the gubbins that I'll be discussing over the course of this video, starting with the BenQ screen bar. And I'm starting with the screen bar because BenQ sent it to me for free. And if you know anything about me, I'm a massive slut for free stuff. So thank you, Mr. BenQ. I love you dearly. If you want to send me anything else, but on a serious note, they asked me for a honest review and they provided no suggestions on what I'm supposed to say. So this is from the heart, my genuine opinion. So I've had it for quite a few months now and I'm really enjoying having it. Living in England means that between September and March each year is basically a period of just complete darkness all the time and it's hella depressing. So having a nice little desk lamp to light up my space has been really, really nice. It's billed as helping with eye strain and helping you sort of see the screen better. And I'm sure it does help in some way, but that's not really what I've used it for personally. For me, I've much preferred just using it as a desk light. I really like the way it lights up the space. It's nice to have a subtle, customizable, tucked away, nifty little desk light that has a bunch of different ranges of warmth and brightness. It can go from eye searingly bright to really quite calm and mellow and different shades of you know, warmth, brightness, and you know, more yellow light for when you're planning to sleep. All really customizable. And there's a button that controls the brightness for you if you're a lazy fuck like I am and can't be bothered to do it yourself. For some reason, I decided to film a lot of this on a really bright day where you can't really tell the difference. But I promise you, when it comes to the evenings, it really does make a difference to not have your eyes burned, your retina seared by your own desk lamp. A lot of people are understandably really worried about screen glare and you know, having the light reflect off the screen. It's not something I've had any issue with. Maybe if you have some sort of huge ultra wide curved thing, might be an issue there, but for my screen, not a problem I've come across at all. And you can also just about get a webcam on top, which is a nice little bonus. So like I said, I've personally really enjoyed it, but I think the key question for something like this is the price and how affordable that price is for you personally. From a quick Google, it seems to be going for around 100 quid-ish on various sites, which means that it's a pretty sizable investment. I know that personally, I looked at buying one of these a few years ago before I was sent one by great god BenQ himself, and I personally came to the decision that I couldn't justify spending that much on what was essentially a desk light. But on the flip side, back then I had some pretty nice lighting on my desk already. I didn't need that extra step. So I'll leave it up to you to decide whether you think you, the lighting in your setup is good enough that something like this wouldn't be a plus. But for what it is, it's a really nice nifty little solution. The fact that it just sits perfectly on the top of your monitor, doesn't take up desk space and has the whole range of warmth and brightness is just nice. So I'll leave it to you to decide whether you think it's worth it. It's discreet, it's nifty, and it's a nice lighting solution to those who can afford it but with the caveat that 100 quid can go a long way when it comes to other peripherals that you'll see even on this video. So bottom line, I can recommend it if you feel like the lighting is something that's really holding back your setup or you think it's something that would really light up the room. Or alternatively, if you're like me and you just like spending money on shiny new toys. BenQ did say I could set up an affiliate link, which would mean that if you bought it, it would financially benefit me, but it personally didn't feel right to me to have a genuine review with a financial incentive at the end if people bought it. So I haven't set one up. So if you want to buy one, buy it from wherever you didn't originally buy it yourself. But anyway, thank you for BenQ for sending it over and saving me from this depressing yellow light that I normally have in my room. 
And thank you again for your patience, because I was supposed to do this like six months ago, and I haven't. So bless Pepper BenQ. I love you dearly. And if you want to send me more free stuff, you should feel free. You feel free. So time to end my corporate shilling for the day and move on to everyone's other favorite shiny new toy, keyboards. So like every tech channel on the entirety of YouTube ever, my main keyboard at the moment is the Logitech MX Keys. I mainly bought this keyboard for its ability to quickly swap between one computer and the other because I use my work laptop here quite a lot as well. And once you've hooked them up, it's literally a one button press between one computer and the other, swaps between the two, delightful, even if I am a lazy bastard and very rarely actually swap them because I do have a keyboard for my work laptop and it's already there, so I can't be asked to pick it up and walk a whole four meters with it. Like, who do you think I am? It's not the keyboard's fault, it's me being a lazy fucker, but that feature works brilliantly. It's really nice to type on, it's got a good battery life, it feels like a kind of souped up lap 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 laptop keyboard. Um, a lot of people make out in their reviews like it's the super uh, ultra mega end game laptop keyboard what i keep saying laptop end game keyboard um really don't think it's been like that for me it's just a nice keyboard to use it's got a good battery life feels nice to type on what more do you want uh, one niche complaint i have is that mine does this weird thing where it just sits and pulses sometimes so given that i've got this in my room i have to turn it off at night because i don't want to be sleeping through a rave from my own keyboard but other than that no complaints at all but sadly the no complaints section ends there because we swiftly move on to <laughs> the sad relic of my brief toe dip into the world of mechanical keyboards where I got myself this little puppy. I was after a smaller keyboard, a bit more desk space for my mouse, and I really liked the look of this one, and on paper it was perfect. It's made of aluminium and is built like a brick shit house. Like you could, this thing is a beast, you could absolutely bludgeon someone with this if you wanted to. Hypothetically, of course, uh, not that I'm, you know, Cut, cut, cut. Yeah, it's insanely solid and it's uh, Gatoron red switches, 60% um, or 65%, I can't remember. Basically, it doesn't have the F keys, doesn't have the number pad, but does have arrows, which was the, the real selling point for me. So I chose to use Gatoron reds, but another good bit about this board is that they're all hot swappable, so you can swap it out if you need to be. And it's even got RGB stuff, which is great if you're seven years old. And on top of all of that, for a mechanical keyboard, it really wasn't that pricey. I think it came in about sort of 80 to 90 quid, which, trust me, in the keyboard world is ridiculously cheap. So on paper, all good. But why do I barely use this anymore? Well, I still use it to play games on, particularly when I play Smite. This is just my go-to keyboard. But the main problem, and this is going to make me sound like such a boomer, is that the keys are just too damn close together for my big, fat sausage fingers. Every time I press a key, I'm pressing like 19 different other keys at the same time. And it's just a nightmare to type on. It just does not feel good. It feels real bad, man. And the red switches do not help with this. I think this is what people in the uh, mechanical keyboard community type uh, describe as feeling mushy. I personally call it feeling like shit because I cannot type anything without half the rest of the alphabet popping in as well. And also, I really miss the F keys, so that was my mistake in not getting them. But the most criminal bit of all is this shift key. It's so small! It's so small! That's the one that I use. To write this section of the script, I whipped this back out to remind myself of what it's like. And it was just as bad, if not worse, than I remember. I'm sure this is probably me doing something stupid and something wrong, so if you're a mechanical keyboard guru, please send aid, I need all the assistance I can get because um, I'm clearly doing something wrong. But for the meantime, this thing it will sit gathering dust under my desk. So moving on to mice, my main mouse for Ever has been the BenQ something whose name I can't remember. I think it's like F2KB or FK2B or something like that. It's basically the, the non-ergonomic one. It's a lot more like straight and flat. It's really bloody flat. And I love this mouse. I love it so much. It just, it's like it's custom built for my hands. I used other mice before that I found started to get my hand quite crampy after a while. Um, no problems with that at all with this mouse. And in fact, I've now shipped it into using it as my main work mouse because I, I do a ton of work at home and I'll be there sort of, you know, hours and hours for the day. I just love it. I love that mouse. If they made a wireless version of that mouse, I would buy every single version in existence. And that's a promise. You can hold me to that, BenQ. Given that I now use it as my work mouse, I wanted to have a separate distinct mouse 
to use for other stuff. And in my quest to cut out wires, I was looking at various wireless mouse when all of a sudden Amazon announced a sale, which included a bunch of Logitech stuff. And not only the, the G Pro, whatever it's called, wasn't included, but they did include, if I can find it, this, which is the G903, um, which it, it looks, it looks a bit gamery. Gamer. It's like the gaming chair equivalent of a mouse, but I've used it for the last month or two and I've really enjoyed it. It's pretty good. And I also like the fact that unlike everyone else on YouTube, I'm not using an MX Master, which I actually have one of those at work. Really not all it's cracked up to be. Very overrated, but that's for another story. This thing has been pretty good, although I do have a real bugbear with it in that I've set my DPI up using the Logitech software to the one that feels comfortable for me. It has like some presets that which you can set on these little middle buttons here um, if you wanted to change them. And the problem is, is that it requires the software to set the DPI, which means that if the software isn't running or if the software is taking a bit of a second to respond, then it just means it's a random different DPI for the time being, which means that, so for example, let's say that you just turn on your computer and you're trying to like click on something, maybe you're trying to get it to restart or to sleep or suddenly you're at a completely different DPI. And for me, this is a really slow DPI, which means that this thing crawls along at like one mile an hour. I have to go like CSGO style swooping of the mouse just to click on the fucking button. And it does my head in it. And it does this every single time the mouse goes to sleep. So if you put the mouse down for, you know, a couple of minutes to look at your phone, pick it back up and try to go click on something, you've then got to swipe for a bit, swipe for a bit, wait for the software to wait back up. Oh, I'm awake again, you know, oh, now, now it's actually working, but that's a pain in the ass. <laughs> and it happens way too frequently. I'm sure this is something I can fix. So if you know how to fix this, please send aid. Um, but otherwise, really enjoying it. Again, it's really quite ergonomic. It's not very, uh, not ergonomic. It's quite non-ergonomic. It's quite just straight. You can see it's like, pretty damn symmetrical, uh, which I really like personally. Good for the lefties as well. Um, I think that's the idea of having it symmetrical is that it suits lefties well. Ton of customization for weight and you can like add and remove side buttons. So you see this side has two side buttons. This side has a, um, I don't know if the camera will focus on it. There you go. But it has this section which you can, you can take back that flap and add in some side buttons if you want. But given that I just use my pinky down there, I don't want to just be randomly clicking stuff. So really like the customization and I've had a good time with it. Good battery life as well. So, no complaints, but at the end of the day, it's no BenQ mouse, so <laughs> I just, please make wireless versions of it, please. I'll send you all the money in the world. Anyway, the, uh, the other stuff that I spent all of my money on is my audio setup. At the beginning of lockdown, I bought myself a Blue Yeti, which served me well over the years and has featured in many a video. But given there's a condenser microphone, which is generally more sensitive to just picking up random noise around you, and the fact that my computer sounds like a fucking jet engine. When I started streaming a lot more and doing a lot more speaking for my videos, I decided it was time to upgrade something a bit more serious. And I went down the dynamic XLR microphone route. Uh, which has turned my audio from sounding like this. In March 2014, Hi-Rez held their first ever official Smite tournament to celebrate the game moving out of its beta phase. Sounding like this. You rarely see solo kills in Smite these days. That well, should be impossible, right? Well, not if you're Pagan. Obviously, on top of that, um, there's been a lot more of understanding from my point of view of like what makes good audio, which has made a ton of difference as well. But um, what I will say is that dynamic mics are really good, but the whole setup for them is so expensive and you are well, well worth just spending the money on sound treating your area first, which is something that I didn't do. So learn from my mistakes, my puny, small, smooth brain mistakes. So the microphone I settled on was the Rode Pod mic, which I absolutely love. This thing is built like a bit of a tank. It's, it's surprisingly heavy for what it looks like. I think it looks really nice. Some people don't agree with that, but I really like the look of it. Even if in filming this section, I did kind of realize that I've had the mic upside down the whole time. But for me, the key was the price because for a dynamic mic, this is really affordable. So to put it into comparison, the Shure SM7B, which you will have seen on every stream in the history of man ever, cost around 400 quid. In comparison, Rode Pod mics currently selling for about 100. You can buy four of those for the price of a SM7B. And they're relatively comparable, especially if you spent the rest of that money on, you know, the rest of that 300 quid difference on setting up your sound recording setup. You can make them sound very, very comparable. In hindsight, I might have splashed out a little bit more for the Rode Procaster, given that I think it's only like 40 quid more and is a bit of a step up in quality. But at the end of the day, I'm really happy with the pod mic, even if it does look ridiculous with this, what's called a fet head poking out the end of it. 
I love that microphone and as this video might show I'm a bit of a road fanboy so <laughs> this will not be the last you hear of them throughout the rest of this video. The microphone is powered by the Focusrite Scarlet Solo, I think that's what it's called, um, which does the job. I don't know nearly enough about uh, audio quality and recording stuff to have any real comments on it. I plug my mic in and it works. I plug my headphones in, they work too. What, what could you want? The mic itself sits on the Rode PSA1, which I love this thing. I told you Rode were gonna come up again. I love, love, love this arm. I had one before, which was about 30 quid off Amazon, which for the price was actually really good and got me a long way. But in a moment of extravagance, I thought, fuck it, let's spend 80 quid upgrading a boom arm that I barely use. But I love this thing. It's so smooth. It's so nice to use. It tucks away really easily. It's just, it's such an upgrade from the previous ones. I mean, there's a reason why everyone and their gran uses this thing. It's just great. I love it. It is expensive for what it is though. Like 80 quid for a boom arm is a complete extravagance. And if this, if you're looking to set up stuff on a budget, this is absolutely somewhere you can save money because there are really good alternatives for cheaper. But like I said, I like shiny new things. So I've said, fuck it. Let's splash out like I did for everything else on this list. So when it actually comes to listening to audio, I have been a real fussy old bastard. I used to just plug in my old uh, Bose wireless headphones into my computer and that worked fine. I was pretty happy with that, to be honest. But I thought I needed to upgrade to something a bit more serious. And I was looking for something wireless that had a microphone. And so the obvious choice was the Steel Series series of microphones. As much of a magpie as I am, as much as I love spending lots of unnecessary money on stuff, even I couldn't fork out the roughly $8 billion to buy the wireless, Arctis Wireless Pro. So instead I settled on getting the Arctis 9s, helpfully illustrated here by being on my head. So these were insanely well reviewed and I was really excited to use these. I thought these were gonna be like the end game for me. So I was, pretty massively disappointed when they turned up because I mean step one they just aren't comfortable they're just not comfortable I must have messed around with this headband for hours and hours and, hours. and it's a good it's a good system for um, customizability actually because you can get it softer on your head you can get it tighter on your head but no matter what I did and trust me I tried with this thing I just couldn't wear them for a long time comfortably because at the end of the day my big old cauliflower is poke the insides of the drivers on the inside and they just squish my ears. And so I just couldn't wear it for more than an hour or so without feeling uncomfortable, which is just not good. It's not good. And otherwise I found the sound quality and I'm no audiophile, but for the price, I really did not find the sound quality that good. I found that my, my Bose Bluetooth headphones were comfortably better in terms of audio quality, which when you just spent like hundreds of quids or something like this, it's a bit of a letdown. And the final problem was the microphone, where everyone had said how good this thing was. <laughs> I also love the way it comes out, like the xenomorph head. Everyone has said so much about how good this was. And I was so disappointed. I mean, this is what it sounds like. Seriously, how does this thing sound so bad? I spent so much money on this. Yeah. I was probably expecting too much for a wireless headset, but doesn't change the fact that it was pretty disappointing in my eyes. They also just generally feel quite clunky to use, I find. Like, to turn them on, it always seems to take a, like a second longer to hold down the button than you think it would. It's the same for turning off the Bluetooth, and then trying to turn it back off again can be a nightmare, because if, if you did it a bit too quickly, it gets a bit flustered. It's like, it's like there's an old granny in there who's working the electrics, and she gets a bit flustered if you tell her to do more than one thing a minute. Oh, I, I don't know what I'm doing. And I just found it a bit annoying to use for something, <laughs> for something that costs so much money. So these are probably gonna be shipped off soon to the glue factory, or I'll just sell them. Um, so instead, I got myself, <laughs> quick change. These, Bear Dynamic DT990 Pros, 250 ohms, because I don't think they do the black ones in any other ohms. The ohms, as far as I can tell, make fuck all difference. Why well, I got these for is because they look cool. So they're open backed, which means that you can basically hear a bit of the outside world through these grates as you're using them, because I found that, um, <laughs> maybe it's me being paranoid, but when I'll be playing a game and you know, someone like knock on the door and like you don't hear them and stuff like that. And then suddenly they come and like tap you on the shoulder. This isn't something that probably happens to a lot of people a lot, but when I was living with my parents, they'd be like, you know, Dan, 
like trying to talk to me. And I'd knock on the door and they'd come tapping the shoulder. Because I'm wearing clothes back, I couldn't hear shit. And I, it is the single scariest thing in your entire life. My heart has not recovered from getting taps on the shoulder and just shitting my pants immediately. So these are open back. Um, I've not had any problems. I was a bit worried they might leak sound into the microphone. I've had no problems with that at all. I don't think they leak much sound at all, um, especially not enough to get picked up by a microphone. Um, these again, pretty comfy. Like, not as comfy as people say they are, again. Maybe this is just me having a fat head, but I feel like people have a very low toler a low bar of what they expect to be comfy. I, I, I don't think these are super comfy, but the sound's really nice. A lot of people complain about the treble, not something I've struggled with, but again, I'm no audiophile. My big complaint is the wire. The wire is, I, I knew it was gonna be like that when I, um, when I bought it, so that's on me, frankly. But yeah, having a big wire is a bit of a bummer, especially because I keep running over it in my fucking stupid chair, and which means that inevitably it's gonna break and you can't replace the wire on these things once they break, you have to just get new headphones. So inevitably it's gonna break and it's gonna be my stupid fault for being a stupid bastard and not sorting out my cable management soon enough. So I can't wait to hate myself when that happens. But talking about my chair leads me nicely onto this chair, this chair that I'm sat on right now and I've got nothing else to say, but fuck this chair. This chair sucks. How can one chair be so bad? I was sent this chair for free by my work, which sounds like it should be a good thing, but free is still too much for this chair. This chair, it, when I'm old, decrepit and withered at the age of 35, this chair will single-handedly be to blame. This chair sucks. If any chair company wants to sponsor me, I will do literally anything. I'll kill a man, I will, <laughs> okay, maybe I, maybe I went a bit to 100, but I'll do lots for a, for a chair. I mean, expect spend any money, apparently. But, um, yeah, this chair sucks. Um, my screen, like, a lot of people ask about my screen when they're buying a new monitor. Mine is a AOC G2460PF, which sounds like one of those auto-generated passwords you get on Google. Um, no complaints from me. It's 22 inches. It's 144 hertz, which is a joy, and um, I've been happy with it. People have asked me how accurate the colors are for video editing. Uh, fuck knows, because I'm colorblind as shit, so definitely not the person to ask. I'm sure they're fine. Uh, <laughs> no one said anything about my stuff. Uh, my only real complaint about this is how long it takes for it to wake up from sleep. Like, you wiggle the mouse, and it takes like, literally like 10 seconds. It doesn't sound much when you say it out loud, but for a screen to wake up, like, if I sat here and waited for 10 seconds, you would notice it. I'm gonna wait for three, I'm gonna wait for five to illustrate it. See, how uncomfortable was that? And that was just like five seconds. I have to wait 10 seconds for it to turn on. It's just not ideal. Why am I still wearing these? I don't need these at all. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's not ideal, but for a 144 hertz screen, you can't go wrong. This came with the computer that I bought, so I don't know how much it is in comparison. It probably doesn't stack up particularly well to competitors these days, but works for me. And then finally, finally, is my camera that I'm recording this on, which is an Olympus camera, the name of which I forget, uh, which I'll put. And on top of that is sat a Rode VideoMic NTG. Again, I told you I'm a Rode fanboy. I love, that. this is my new extravagant purchase and it's so unnecessary because I don't film anything out and about, but I love this microphone. I absolutely love it. It's great. Um, it's got so many nifty little features and it looks kind of funny on top of the mic. So what's there to complain about? That's you. So I think that just about wraps it up. Um, if I've missed anything, let me know. If there's anything you want me to talk more about, let me know because Trust me when I say I've got a lot more to say on all of this stuff. I could rant about this forever, as you may have guessed. So um, that's it from me. Um, not something I'm planning on doing a lot, but I got quite a few requests to talk about this, so I thought I'd throw it in there. Uh, peace out. Uh, yeah, what else there to say? Deuces.